All right, so welcome back to another episode of Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally on Tuesdays, you get questions with Coach, and so you're going to get that. I got two questions I'm going to go through, and I appreciate you guys for sending them in. And if you want to be a part of questions with Coach, make sure you send an email to Sip the Tally at gmail.com, and we'll answer your questions on screen, whether it be live or in recorded like this, you know, in that show. And um, with this episode, you're going to get a bonus. When I was, I went back and rewatched the playoff game because, you know, with things that's going on, you got a lot of free time. And I noticed on the first drive that we had problems with the interior guys from Tennessee. So what you're going to get after I finish the two questions are, you'll get some film from that first drive of the Tennessee Titans game. And you're going to get why I, you know, upon rewatching and realized that we were going to have problems with those guys all night because of uh, some of the things they did and did not do. We had some success and some failures on that drive, but it pretty much set, sets the tone for the rest of the night. And so the first question is from Kalen Hutchins, and Kalen has been consistently sending questions, you know, to be answered on the show. So his question goes as follows. Uh, Coach, I hope everything is going as best as possible for you, your family, and everything you hold dear, which it is. I appreciate it, and I, and I, I wish the same for you, too. Uh, do you see Brandon Williams being cut? Or a trade candidate this year if Justin Matabuke, Dale Mack, or Broderick Washington outplays him in training camp? If so, be Eric. And what would you like to do? So my response to that is Brandon is a special, special, special interior guy. It's not a lot of big interior run stopping guys in the league left. So and we need that because we need to have a guy in there that can stop the run. The only person that I think even is on the roster that fits Brandon's body type is Mac. And I don't know if Mac's going to make a big enough leap to just put him out of there. Because if we go small and let Calais Campbell be the only big guy we have in there, teams are probably going to be able to bully us around, you know, in the interior. So I think Brandon needs to stay just for run, you know, for run purposes. Just to be, he could maybe be a first and second down D tackle or a nose tackle or whatever. But I, I really would like for him to stay on the team, especially this year, and, and ride this thing out and see where we can go with it. Um, so and as far as B being Eric, I, I definitely keep him. I definitely keep him for, for those reasons I just stated. The last part of this question is he, speaking of Brandon Williams, would save us $9.2 million on the cap being a post-June 1 cut. Enough money to maybe give Jadavian Clowney or Jamal Adams. Uh, we Ravens fans will be able to rank, uh, retain Matthew Judon. So, with that being said, I think we're good. Would I, I love to have Jamal Adams? Yes, I, I would. But I think we're good. I think if that don't work out, I think we're a good enough defense and we're going to be better offensively to help the defense out to go do what we need to get done. Um, now, if if for some strange reason, Jamal Adams is available. So the trade-off, basically you're asking, would the trade-off be cut Brandon and get Jamal Adams? Whew. I think we got to stop the run. I just think we got to stop the run. And he may, Jamal Adams maybe could help us in the run game on the edges, but that interior, we got to be able to stop the run. We got to, we got to have some, some thickness up in there. We got to have some, some, some wide, some wide lows in the middle to stop the run. Secondly, if, you know, the trade-off, we don't want to be trade Jadavian Clown, not trade, but have Jadavian Clown it or have Brandon Williams. If Clown was on this team, I think that would slide uh, Calais Campbell definitely to the interior permanently. And then you look at having Campbell at a one or a zero. Clowney maybe at a three. Judah at like the five or seven. And maybe McPhee at the other five or seven. That's nasty right there. Now that's nasty. That's nasty. Now I can see that I'll take that um, possibility over the Jamal Adams possibility. I really would. That's that's nasty to even think about for a front four. Judah, Clowney at the three. Judon at the five or seven, depending on if they have a tight end or not. You have McPhee or Bowser or whoever else at the other, you know, 
Oh, uh, no, Wolf. I forgot about Wolf. Got Wolf in there too. So, I think I would, Clowny I would go for. Clowny I would go for. On, as we cut, cut uh, Brandon, get that nine mil to add to it, whatever $3 we have left and give it to um, Clowny. I would go for that. All right, that's the answer to your first question. My second question. It's from uh, Corey Petit, or Petite, however you say that. Um, I hope I didn't mispronounce it. Uh, out of the two rookies, out of the two new rookies, Ben Powers and Fluker. So basically saying the two rookies we have, which is Bredesen and um, the kid from Mississippi State, Ben Powers and Fluker, maybe even Makari if Skur is healthy for center. Who's my favorite to replace Yonder? So initially, my favorite to replace Yonder, starting off with, is Fluker. I think Fluker is an experienced guy. He's a, a he's nasty in the run game, not as good in, in the pass game. And I think he's the guy to initially replace Yonder. But long term, I think the long term answer, in my opinion, is Powers. I really like Powers coming out of Oklahoma last year. Uh, go back and watch his tape from when I did it. He was one of the first guys I reviewed when I started doing the um, – uh, draft stuff, and I really think Powers has the the wherewithal, the ability to to replace Yonder, you know, for the long term. But initially, short term, first eight games or so, I think it's gonna be DJ Fluker. So now we're gonna roll over to the film that I talked about. Uh, we're gonna see how we did versus these D tackles from Tennessee, and what we did good and what we did bad in that first drive. Let's go. With the, with the bills, with the so the two guys we're gonna focus on today and i think i think this is jareel casey which they don't have anymore and jeffrey simmons there'll be a third guy i mentioned in a minute but i don't know his number or his name but uh mainly we're gonna focus on these guys in here and before anybody says anything let me go ahead and make this mouse bigger but the guys we're going to focus on, these two guys, these interior guys, these interior guys. One's Darrell Casey, one's Jeffrey Simmons. I don't know which is which, but let's go. All right, so there they are, Spot Shadow. Now, the thing I want to emphasize is movement. When you run the type of offense Baltimore runs, you have to have movement on the interior linemen to make stuff work. So just generally looking at this, for, at this point, there's a lot of people in the box. On defense, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys in the box. And what we count as the box is from here to here, there are eight guys in the box. Traditionally, the box is from tight end to tight end or tackle, or whatever. But we're going to add him as a box player, too. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys for the Titans. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for us. Did I count that right? Three, six, nine for us. All right, you got this guy Sneeze coming in motion. We're not going to count Sneeze. So, the, the key is movement on these guys. If we can move these two guys, we can neutralize everybody else. All right, so let's watch it. All right, just let it play through, and I'll go back and, and show you what I got the highlight now for. So, again, focus on these two guys. Let's watch the moving on them. So right here, we're going to double team here, solo block by Young. And initially, they're right above the line. So let's kind of focus on whether they get moved backwards or they cross the line or they stay even. So and, and out of that scenario, two of those things are wins for the D-lineman. If they stay in the same spot and create a pile, that's a win. If they get penetration, that's a win. The only way the offense wins is if there's movement backwards or vertically for them. He would have to move this guy that way or, uh, let me see, vertical or horizontal. He just can't stay here. And the same thing here, you got to move him either out or back. Out or back. He got to gotta be moved. All right? Now, look at that. They've been moved maybe a half. They was on this, right on this edge of the line. They're on this side of the line. And keep in mind, it's three guys up in there, including Ingram. So, had Ingram gotten this ball... They didn't move this dude. They didn't, well, these dudes. They didn't move him at all. Didn't get very much movement on him. And granted, we got 
a bunch of yards on, on this play because of Lamar. Focus on this up in here. There is not much movement from where they are now to where the play began. So let's back it back to where the play began. Right, just focus on this yard line. Ball snaps. Yonder got a little movement. Now Yonder did get a little bit of movement. But the double team didn't move him at all. Look at him, he still didn't, didn't move him at all. And the fact that you got basically two and a, you got four on four hands and this hand can't move this dude. Because uh, Stanley's sticking his hand out there to be a part of that too. Even though he's trying to come off to this linebacker. So you basically got three guys blocking one for the most part. Which is not good. And they don't get movement. If you got two and a half people, this dude needs to be back here somewhere. Needs to be back here somewhere. Here in lies. Now, this might have been the first play of the game. Might have been the first play of the game. But we got yardage. We got yardage, so, you know, kind of camouflage. So, we got yardage on this play. Let's go to the next play. Let's see what I got right here. All right. These three guys. I'm going to focus on these three. And so, I know it's Casey Simmons, and I don't know who the other guy is. And I don't know which one is which, so we're not going to focus on them. Just look at that. Look at, look at where they start at. Look at where they start at. Didn't get much moving. I'll talk about these arrows in a second. So now we basically got a power coming. We got power coming. So what should happen on power is he's going to try to kick whoever's the end man on line of scrimmage. And right now it's going to be this guy because he's inside of Stanley. Bozeman going to come around trying to wrap to a linebacker. Trying to wrap to a linebacker. Stanley's, Stanley's blocking down on him because he was inside, which is what's supposed to happen. We should get a double team right there with Orlando Brown and Yonder on this dude. And you should get a back block by McCart. I think this is McCart. So, uh, Brown's going to try to come off to one of these dudes, preferably him right there. Um, Ricard's going to block him. Hopefully, Bozeman's pulling this dude. Boyle is going to try to cut him off. He's going to attempt to cut this dude off, and then you got to have him a hat. But... We don't get movement enough movement out of these guys right here. So right now, Makari has leverage. His head is on. He's on the inside. He has leverage. He's winning that right now. Yonder's head is on the inside, but I don't really think he has leverage because look, Yonder is. You see the angle Makari's at. Yonder's kind of square. Makari has great leverage on this dude. Yonder's leverage is there, but you would want that butt to kind of move closer to Orlando to get leverage. And Lando probably should bang him, bang this dude, and then move up to the linebacker. Now, with that being said, Orlando should have gotten this dude, and he didn't. So this is where the line comes in at. Look at that. They all have their gap responsibilities now. He got that gap. He, he's, his head is in this gap. His head is in this gap. He's coming to press this gap, and he's scraping over the top because this is the guy Orlando should have blocked. This, with they had three linebackers in there, this is the guy Orlando should have blocked. He should have combo to this dude instead of combo to that guy. Now look at that. Now all the gaps are filled. Mark has really has nowhere to go. You got that man there, him here, and him filling here, even though he gets kind of off track. He's right there where he needs to be. Nowhere to go because we didn't get the proper movement like we needed to with that double team. And we didn't block the, pro the right person. So 54 made that tackle, right? Let's see where he is. So when when Bozeman pulled around, he should have been blocking 54. Orlando Brown should have blocked this dude. He should have had to scrape all the way over the top to get there. Should have. But because we didn't get this guy blocked, the first person to show up or who glanced in front of Bozeman, he didn't know who to block because there's two guys right here. Shouldn't be but one. Shouldn't be but one. But if you look at the end result, the tight end got this dude. So why is Brown here? The tight end got who he's supposed to get. Brown's guy's up in here making the tackle. This is early in the game. Early, early, early in the game. Remember all these plays from, from, from the first drive. Let's go on to the next play. 
I think this play we actually did something. I think we actually got moving on this play. I don't remember how I, because I cut these a couple days ago. So I'm trying to remember my thought process. Again, we're focusing on those two guys right there in the middle. I don't know. I'm assuming one's Simmons and one's Casey. Now, he's falling to the ground, so there's going to be kind of sort of movement on that because when you get him on the ground, if you can move your feet enough to move him over a little bit more, that's going to help. Look at Makari also. All right. Let me go back. I got ahead of myself. Got ahead of myself. So there's that movement. Now, look at the fight right here, Makari with, with this guy. All, they were right at this line right now. Makari has him three yards deeper already. Jump ahead of myself again. Now look, we got moving on this guy because it was at the line of scrimmage. We moved him to the left of our on our screen and back some, and we got like vertical push on this dude. Now look at that hole. Look at the gap. Look at the gap Gus has because we got movement on the interior lineman. We got movement on the interior lineman. That's that's it's simple. Football ain't that hard. The execution part is hard. But the the, the the X and O, Y stuff should work and why it shouldn't work ain't that hard. Execution is what's hard. That's why I guess, you know, these guys make the amount of money they make. We got, just look at it. We got movement. Got down block and he kind of bit the dirt and we're going to move him a little bit more. Because he, this guy right here started right up in here. McCarr's got started right here and then we get vertical push right there. Had Gus not initially, and watch Gus, Gus didn't really hit this as hard as he probably should have. In my eyes, in my eyes, let me go back so I can break down the way I see it. Let's talk about Gus for a second. Gus should have been reading this dude to see where he, he got vertical pushed this way. So Gus should have been trying to hit it right downhill, in my opinion. See, Gus started to the right. He started this way, then tried to cut it back. Had Gus started straight downhill and trusted it, instead of him being at this yard line, he'd probably be right here right now and can run away from this dude. I don't know if he makes a tackle or not. He helps in on the tackle. But had he started right downhill, just watch the little cut from Gus. If he's going straight downhill right now, because it's already starting to open. It's already starting to open right there. It's opening right there. He's all, and why he's continuing to go right, I don't know. See what I'm saying? It was already there. And then it just got wider. It just got wider. And he eventually saw it, but split second decisions. Split second decisions. Next play. And this might be the last play I have. Now, got to move that guy. Got to. Got to move him. Ain't nobody else even in there. We If we run the ball right here, we got to move him. It's, you just... You, he got to be moved. Got to be. Let's see what happens. Got a double team between the center and yonder. No movement. No movement whatsoever. So now, with that being, ooh, excuse me. With that being said, Makari um, and yonder is fighting with this guy. He's allowed to come free. He's allowed to come free. And he can kind of see what's going on. Uh, he had a quarterback, so that's understand. You know that's your job. But we get we didn't get any movement, so these guys are able to see what's going on. They're able to see like what's going on in the backfield, and they attack. And they attack. Gus has nowhere to go. Nowhere to go because we didn't get movement. He jumped into that gap, and he just stayed there. And they, nope, they didn't move him. When he stopped fighting, when they stopped fighting each other, which is right about here, he's still in the same spot. Still in the same spot. Had a double team. Double team the guy didn't move him. Can't happen. Can't happen. And yeah, them linebackers got a lot uh, had a bunch of tackles. But the D tackles are, are the ones that ate this game for Tennessee. The D tackles are the ones that ate for this ate during this game for Tennessee. So and I think that's the last play. Let me let me make sure. Yeah, that's the last one. So, with that being said, this is you know, my synopsis of, of how Tennessee Titans got 
the upper hand. Because after that, I think the last play I just showed you, I think the interception might have been next for, in that first drive. Um, we just couldn't handle. Let me go back to it. Couldn't handle. Couldn't handle. Those two. Couldn't handle them guys on the inside. Couldn't handle them guys on the inside. With probably our best offensive lineman, a part of that trio that was, you know, tasked with, with blocking it. So I'm looking at Bozeman, Makari, and Yonder. I'm sure Yonder had some good plays down there, but it's looking at this first drive, those three were pretty average versus... And, and, and Casey... Casey is a stout, strong individual, and Simmons is a going to be an animal. Keep in mind, he had an ACL coming out of Mississippi State. Simmons is going to be an animal. But the fact of the matter still remains is we didn't run the ball like we needed to, which forced us to throw more than we want to, which... Turn into an air force. Turn into a freaky air force, unfortunately. But um, if it's your first time here, man, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We over 4K, man. I appreciate you guys. Added a new Patreon sub today. I'm thankful for that. And um, be on the lookout for some more stuff coming to you guys over in the Patreon, whether it be exclusively for Patreon or you get like a first look on that. Because the Patreon got Patreon guys got like a three to four day advance of the Hollywood Brown um, film I put out. Comparing him to Tyreek. So it's, it's good to be over there at Patreon. And the more content we start to get publicly, the more stuff I'll put over there. And again, I appreciate you guys coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. Peace. I've been asked, how can people support my channel and help it grow? And after talking to other YouTubers, Patreon.com is the answer. Any amount donated will help build the channel. My goal is to get a telestrator and help explain the ins and outs of the game even more. So go on over to patreon.com backslash zip the tally to support the channel. And there will also be videos for subscribers only in the future. This is Coach Evans and again thanks everyone for the support and head on over to patreon.com backslash zip the tally.